Om Vajrabhadra Hum Pat, Om Jalarora Hum Pat, Ka Manaira Hum Pat. May sing out the first mantra, yea. Om Vajrabhadra Hum Pat, Om Jalarora Manaira Hum Pat. Let's focus on the mantra you learned last week. Om Vajrapadra Humpa. Om Vajrapadra Humpa. Om Vajrapadra Humpa. Om Vajrapadra Humpa. Hope you're all doing well this time. Well, not like last time you were not doing well. I mean, I hope you're doing well. Bhadra Bhadra, cutting through the illusion of wealth, acquisitions. Om Vajra Bhadra Hum Pat. Good. A review of last week's uh, seal. Om Vajra Bhadra Hum Pat. The concept of Cutting through the illusion of wealth or abundance. To free our mind from the idea of greed. Focus on enjoying everything we have. Prudently preserve what we need, of course. Does not mean to become ascetic and poor. And there is no judgment against being rich. It means to free your mind from any concept of wealth and abundance so you can focus on the experience that you live rather than what you have acquired. Good. Then we move on to the next seal of this process of the 42 seals. In this process, one seal is made with the left hand, then another with the right, and then another with the left again, and then another with the right, and so on. So the mudra for this week is that. Actually, whoop, you're just resting your hand and letting it down. You're not clasping anything. You're just resting it and the fingers bend a bit inward. So like if it was holding a string. Let's Bring this back to the face. Did that work? No, not enough. All right. So it's called the lasso mudra. A lasso is rope that a cowboy would use to attach a cow horse in Asia it's little elephants so they would stop moving okay if you still don't have the PDF you don't need to worry about it but you can download the, the PDF 
with the mantras uh, and the seals. It's a bit better even to buy the book on Amazon, but it is very optional. So it's a right hand mudra. Yes. So with the right hand, I don't know, maybe you see it left because of the camera, but this is my right hand. This is my left hand. So with the right hand, you just let it drop. Okay. The mantra, Jala Rora Manaira Humba. Okay. It's four words for two aspects of one concept. So let's take these words one at a time. Jala Rora, the flowing worker, literally does not make a lot of sense. The flowing worker. The continuously operating river is what we want to look at as a concept. Jala Rora. Okay. Jala is water. And the Rora is worker, something that constantly works. Or someone, not a workaholic, but there's there someone working, okay? But together, Jala Rora is a river that constantly flows, or a waterfall in rare contexts. So let's go with the continuous river. Yesterday, I was <clears throat> imagining myself giving the class. I do this before class. And I was even imagining myself explaining that I do this, explain to you that I was doing this. Um, because my mind would not settle yesterday evening. I was wondering how I was going to teach you this. This hard to grasp concept of Jala Rora Manaira. And the mind constantly working is what we're talking about here in this mantra with Jala Rora. Okay. So Jala Rora like a river constantly flowing the mind flows with thoughts constantly if you imagine being on the beach or the side of a river and you look at the river, you're not looking at every drop of water flowing. Although the river is constantly flowing, you're looking at the river as a single unified object and you enjoy the pattern. If you imagine that your mind is that river and you look at your mind with the same attitude, observing the mind in its constant flow, but not getting caught up with every thought that pass, you could relax observing your mind like a flowing river instead of being caught up with the concepts that are flowing in the mind. You get that? So that's Jala Rora, the ever-working mind and the attitude of letting it flow, allowing it to think. In this sense, we're not even trying to control the mind, to stop it. 
we're allowing it to think and observing it without specific attachment to any of the thoughts going on. And that is Jalarora. To allow it to flow and just appreciate the stream of thoughts. Like you would be relaxing next to a river. Let's take a moment to ponder this. Jalarora. Jalarora. In this way, we are educating ourselves in the proper way to bring peace of mind. Not trying to control our thought flow by being oppressive, but appreciating a phenomena of nature. The mind is flowing with thoughts. Okay. You observe it as a stream and not get caught up with the single individual thoughts. Jalarora. We are speaking of the mind, and the clue that we're speaking of the mind is Manaira. Manaira means the refreshed mind or mind refreshing, depending if it's an object or an objective, adjective. Let's focus now on the second concept, manaira. Mana or man in this context refers to mind or intellect. Aira is it's multiple concepts. It's refreshing. It is standing still. Something not in the little PDF, but it's in the book, is a reference to the Hindu origins of the practice. Airavata is the elephant of Indra. The elephant of Indra is a symbol of the mind and your spirit. Immobile, unmoved. Okay. So, Manaira is a reference to mind and the Aira part of Airavata. So Manaira is relax in a still mind. Let's contemplate this for a moment. Manaira is the concept of resting and being refreshed. Ah, feeling good in the mind. Which gives us the impression that the mind is still. The mind is not still. It is constantly flowing with Jalarora. But not getting caught up in the single thoughts. Just allow it to flow and calm yourself and relax your mind by not attaching to the thoughts that you have. Still, not controlling your mind to stop it, not being oppressive with yourself. In many of other ways, I often teach not to control your mind in, in, with such effort. So 
So I will here take my typical example. If you have a bowl of water and there's ripples on the top of the water and you want the ripples to stop, if you stop it with effort with your hands, stop, just fucking stop ripples. With your hands, you're making more ripples. The solution for the ripples to stop on the water in your big bowl is to wait patiently and not make an effort to stop it. The ripples in the water is usually how I teach this kind of basic concept. So here with Jalarora Manaira Humpan, we're cultivating an attitude of appreciating a river in nature. In this case, the river is your mind and feel refreshed. The mudra is done with the right hand. Usually the right hand is active. But now the right hand is just letting go, bending down. You just rest it down with your fingers just a bit inside. So again, a symbol of the active right hand is relaxing. The active mind is relaxing. It seems easy at first, this class, this mantra, seems to be straightforward. But like the first seal, it holds a more complex teaching, which I will come to in a moment. Paradoxal and hard to grasp. <clears throat> Let's focus on Jalarora. The flow of the mind. And appreciating the flow of the mind without attachment to single thoughts. In this case, you're paying attention to the class, I understand. When you try to go to bed, see what happens if you try to apply Jalarora and not get caught up with all the thoughts. But with respect to your mind, not try to control it not try to stop the thought flows. Jalarora. So you're observing the general stream of your mind. Like if it's like a, observing a river, appreciating its pattern, its nature, and not getting caught up with specific turbulence in it. And that is refreshing and relaxing. Manaira. A variation of the word Aira is, in Sanskrit, is Arya, which means noble or perfected. Okay. So it's very close. Manarya to Manaira, the perfected mind. In this case, it's the relaxing and refreshing mind. Good. Let's speak of the last expression, humpath. Sometimes in the document you have there's a H in the path, P-H-A-T, and sometimes there is no H, path. That is considered to be a mistake on my part. It 
technically should be PHAT all the time, but both are accurate. Simply because in Sanskrit, there is no H next to the P. And the H is also not absent next to the P. And it's not a paradox, it's a different language. Pot, uh, if it's P or PH, doesn't matter. It's this intense pot. Because it's not written with an H, it's in Devanagari, it's another language. Okay, so it's not a mistake. But I should be consistent and always write pat with P H A T because I find it gives more presence to the P. But it's not the French F when you write PH, okay? It's it's really the pat instead of pat. Okay? Just more exhale in the pat. Um pat means feel it subjugating, feel it intensely. But that seems to be a contradiction if we're trying to relax the mind. Okay, so the home path in this mantra, like any other, is not supposed to be an explosive state. I am relaxing my mind. Ah, It's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be a certainty to embrace it with will, to really desire whatever precedes the home path. In this case, to be serious with relaxing the mind by appreciating its stream without attachment to its turbulence or objects of thoughts. Just allow it. Okay? Om Jala Rora Manaira Hum Pat. Om Jala Rora Manaira Hum Pat. Om Jala Rora Manaira Hum Pat. Feel it rather than think it. Feel the concept. You will realize that allowing your mind to think, permitting the flow to happen, but relaxing your addiction to it, Relaxing your attachment to what you're thinking is how you will relax your mind. Home path means feel it. For real. Be serious about how it feels more than how you can convince yourself. Okay? Good. Now for the paradox. In the previous month, uh, we learned a bit about the word Vajra. But I did not give details. It just says, I just said it cuts through illusion. In Sanskrit, the word Vajra means two specific things in the dictionary. Lightning or diamond, which is absolute contradiction. A diamond is the hardest thing, the most persistent in time. And lightning is the most temporary, that when you see it, it's already gone. It's a paradox. It is indestructible, 
yet impermanent. It's a paradox. Two concepts that cannot exist together, but does. Okay. In the same way, Jalarorama Naira is a paradox. If you contemplate the idea Jalarora, yeah, I'll give I'll give you a minute to think about it and for Shivagam to write what he was writing. If you contemplate Jalarora, a flowing river that never stops, and then you contemplate Manaira, <clears throat> the immobile elephant, but the river is your mind, and the immobile elephant is your mind. Contemplate both expression in their images, just for fun. And you would be tempted to look, at, to imagine an immobile elephant next to a flowing river. That is the mistake. The mistake is to see two separate objects, a flowing river, and an immobile elephant next to it. That is a mistake. Do not do this to mistake. The hard part of this mantra is to embrace the paradox of a single object that is both forever flowing and immobile. And it is not two things. It is a single thing. A simple, a single concept. So try to feel that. Not just in your head, but feeling it. It's a feeling. The concept of Jalaro Ramanaira. It is forever flowing and immobile. And it is a single thing. It is not a river and an elephant. It is neither. These are the images to help you. But the ever-flowing, refreshed mind is immobile and moving at the same time. And it's a paradox. The goal of this mantra is to sit in the paradox, to contemplate these two contradicting things, that it is always moving and that never moving, using the concept of an eternal flow, unaffected, by anything. And that is the paradox of this mantra. Not every seal has a paradox, but some of them do. And it's important to practice the concept of a constant flow and immobility. We use the images of a river and an elephant in the learning process of both expressions. But now liberate yourself from these images and go into the states of being that they invoked. And refresh yourself, making the right hand mudra like this, just relaxing it. And if you can, keep the pearl mudra on the left hand 
holding like if you were holding a pearl but you don't think about it too much om jalarora manaira humpat the ever flowing refreshed mind relaxing in it detaching from the single objects and with the mudra a contradiction again it is called the lasso mudra with which you I mean, usually your hand is just really relaxing down now i have to show it on camera your active hand, the right hand, has a lasso. A lasso is supposed to put force on an animal that is wild and immobilize it. But the mudra is so relaxed. And the lasso is not around an animal. It's not around one of those wild thoughts. It is in your hand not being used. So in the mudra, the active control is being relaxed. That's what the mudra does. Just relaxing the right hand, the fingers slightly in. It relaxes the need to control. The lasso mudra is not there to give you the power to immobilize thoughts. It is there to remind you that you Keep the lasso in hand, not using it. You relax the control. You make no effort with your mind. And that was the explanation of the mudra. Om Jalarora Manaira Humpa. It will have a, an effect on your third eye, your crown chakra, and your jade gate. Om Jalarora Manaira Humpa. Yeah, I don't mind these these chakras. I just named. Um, I just mentioned it's it's an obvious side effect that you're. It's going to affect your mind in that way. Om Jalarora Manaira Humpa. The paradox of an eternal flow relaxing in it, refreshing your mind, appreciating the beauty of nature to have a flow of mind. And not pay attention to any single turbulence. Not care about the individual thought processes. Good. Now for the side effect of this practice. When you do your mala every evening and then try to rest in the concept. <laughs> the first side effects or reactions will be from all the muck and the dirt at the bottom of your mind river to rise. You can expect your mind to seem actually polluted. But that's the purification process. When you start practicing this, this seal, it refreshes you eventually. Actually, like right from the first practice, it, the refreshing part happens. But it will take dirt and, and muck, uh, that means like goo, from the bottom of the 
river and it will make it rise and flow. Negative thinking, potential aggressivity. It doesn't awaken your emotions. But by awakening negative thought patterns while they come out, you know, could produce an emotional reaction. Yeah, the third level side effect, you know, impact, impact, impact. Eventually awaken some deep stuff. It will cleanse your mind. But it will give you the proper attitude in life. Eventually. To not get caught up with the flow of events. To appreciate the stream of your life including all its surprises, its gifts, and its drama, and not get caught by the individual turbulence. It will bring great positivity in your mind. It will bring the virtue of hope in its supernatural sense. Because you will train to see your entire life as a beautiful stream where things constantly happen and yet you are unmoved by it. It does it in your mind and it will bring you this view on everything. And ultimately, this is the non-dramatic seal. It's paradoxical. And it trains you to simply embrace every experience without, without taking anything personal about it. And everything I said about your mind is about the training of that seal. And the ultimate goal of this seal is for you to see any stream of event with that detachment to individual turbulence. Just refresh your soul, immobile, in the flow of experiences of your life. What you learn and practice with your mind, your soul will apply to the stream of life itself. And there you have it, the entire beauty of this seal. <laughs> the home path is that last reference to everything you did with the mind before, now you apply it and you let yourself subjugate it by its beauty, by its impact. Okay? This one's going to be harder for the right-handed people. Because you want to take your mala in the left hand. Because with the right hand, you're practicing the active mudra of relaxing your mind. Actually, the lasso mudra is the mudra of relaxing drama. Applied to the mind means what it means. Good. Let's do one mala of this mantra. Not speed dialing that little, little, little. Just step by step. Okay. Om Jala Rora Manaira Humpa. 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 Om Jala Rora Manaira Humpa.
ओम जलारो रमनायरा हम पर 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 Om Jalaro Ramanai Rahumpa. 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 I might have skipped a bead on these recitations, so just finish finish your mala. Some malas have a hundred and eight beads. Some malas have a hundred and nine beads. So just finish your mala. You might do one more recitation than the others. It's okay. That's the fun of this practice. It's wonderful.
it will seem like making your mind a bit disturbed not crazy it won't go that deep it's, it's not the seeds of truth <laughs> it's uh it's refreshing but some pollution will rise first few days few days I wish to express my gratitude to the translators, Shivagam, Shivani, Jivatan, and Vincent, I always forget his soul name, Basha something. <laughs> I wish to express gratitude to Rashidva, who inspired me to give the Mahakaruna training this year, because he was practicing it a few weeks ago. And he asked questions about it. And I said, that's a good idea. I'm going to teach this in 2021, the entire year. My gratitude to uh, Ryan Gebhardt, who uh, every week uploads the video on YouTube. So that if Facebook ever deletes the videos, we have a copy on YouTube. Thanks to Ryan. My gratitude to everyone who is financially supporting me. You don't have to, but it is well appreciated because it allows me to earn a living and live peacefully. Thank you guys for following the class and for practicing. Now, do one mala every day, and then just relax in the concept. Bit. That's all the training you need for this one. All right. Peace.